One of my first jobs was as a law clerk in the 90s for the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Legal Services in Brisbane. I assisted the families of several people murdered in Queensland police custody. There was always something genocidal about those instances. And in those instances, no police officer was ever charged and no police officer or politician ever said sorry. By 2004, Prime Minister Howard was already resigned to the fact that he wasn't going to say sorry. His government and his Australia would not be responsible for the past. My great-grandfather, the first Sam Watson, worked hard, him and my great-grandmother. He was granted an exemption from the Act. They both missed out on a childhood, but no one in our family was ever taken away. On 12th of February 2008, I'd pulled a 14 to 15 hour shift as a security supervisor on an industrial site in Brisbane. I knew there was something significant happening in Canberra, but when you're working the graveyard shift consecutively, it, it just saps you. I actually slept through the apology, seven hours deep sleep and then back to work. But when I got to work and I worked on a site that was predominantly staffed by Polynesian and Maldi workers, the boys literally formed an honour guard when I walked in. Most of these guys had lived through significant political events involving Indigenous rights in New Zealand. These men were ecstatic about the apology where I was still trying to process it and today even I'm still trying to process the apology. Rudd said he'd do it and he did. What all Australians received that day was a chance to renew their vision of history. Some clarity about our national identity. And there's the clarity that the stolen generation deserve from an apology from a sincere Australian leader. I have trouble trusting any politician, any words, any forthcomings. They all have limited political shelf lives. As a writer, I visualise words as living entities. And it worried me to think that a generation of Australians through this would actually one day fear the word sorry. Because in the present climate, more than ever, it belongs to the stolen generation. Sorry belongs to a future of healing, compassion and hope.